Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek TV at Gen Con 2014. I'm sitting down with Bruno Cathala of Bombex. And we have some sea creatures to show you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had threatened to do the entire interview like this until Bruno started making jokes about the cover art and I believed him, so now I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> anyway, this, the game we are showing is Abyss with the wonderfully fantastic Cover. Cover. I was going to say with the wonderfully fantastic that. Yes, I because don't. there are five different covers. Right, so I know, yes, all, all different shades and, exactly. and character of craggy faces. Connected to the different families in, in, in the game. And look at that, see, it all ties into the gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what are we trying to accomplish in Abyss? So, in Abyss, in Abyss sorry, you are in an undersea world. Okay, a lost undersea world. No Disney here. No, though. absolutely not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> and your target is to become the new king of this undersea world. To do that, you need to have the most influence points at the end of the game. Okay, and these points you will get them in four categories. You will get points for the monsters you will kill during the game, which will give you some extra reward from two to four points. Okay, you will give get points for the allies you will affiliate in during the game. You have five different clans of uh, allies. Um, Seahorses, crabs, crabs, jellyfish, <laughs> octopuses. Octopi? And octopi? Octopus? Octopuses, octopi? I don't know. <laughs> ah, I don't know. <laughs> and shells. Ooh. Okay. I will explain how to affiliate them, but at the end you will score only the best of each color. Okay. Uh, you will also get points for the powerful lords of the abyss, mm. which are there. They have quite all specific abilities, uh, specific costs, but but they also give you points at the end of the game. And I'm going to actually just pull these up into the middle for just a moment, yeah. so we can we can zoom in on these since these are um, quite spectacular looking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just 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 so people can ogle some of some of the more powerful characters here. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, during the game, maybe you will take control of some specific location, which are here like that, for example, and. Each of the locations are different. They give, they have a specific way to get extra points. Mm -hmm. And this will go, and uh, you make the total, and the surprising, the higher score wins. <laughs> I'm really proud of this surprising thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any game's done that before. Yes. <laughs> I didn't understand why. <laughs> so now, how to play? On your turn, you will only do one action to choose between three different ones. The first one is exploration. So, you go from this, from this deck, okay? Uh, imagine I'm doing that. I flip the first card. So this is not a good example. <laughs> so we it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Alright, so it's an octopus. Yes. Before uh, choosing what I can do for myself with that, I am obliged to ask the other players if they want to buy it to me. For example, imagine you are playing at four people. Mm -hmm. The first one could pay it for me from one pearl. So he pays one pearl and he takes the card in his hand. But if he doesn't want, the second player can buy for one pearl. If he doesn't want, the third player can buy for one pearl. If, if nobody wants that card, I can keep it for me for free. Okay. And this ends my turn. But maybe I don't want. So I flip a second card. This is a stop or go mechanism. That means that now we are only working, uh, playing for that card. Okay. We can't come back. Okay? Etc. During my turn, each of my opponent can buy only one card. The first card will cost one pearl. The second, two pearls. The third, three pearls. That means that the cost increases each time. Okay? And I do that until I take one card for me. If I go up to the last space, 
and nobody buys that car to me, I'm obliged to take it in my hands. But I'm guessing uh, perhaps a pearl and comes with it? Exactly. I gain one pearl. In that deck, you also have monster cards. If I flip a monster card, I have a choice to fight or to let the monest growing. That means if I fight the monster, it ends my turn and I get the reward which is in front of that token. Ah. That means I have a choice between one pearl or monster one token. token. I win automatically, okay? But if I don't want to uh, fight that monster, the Mona's token go that way. That means that the next one we will have to fight a monster will get a better reward. Mm. And a better reward, and a better so one. And when someone fights, this token comes th All that the way, way, crashing back down. <laughs> that, that's it. Okay? So I've explained that. When I end my turn, imagine if I fight a monster, this card is discarded. The card I didn't take come here, color by color, family by family, mm -hmm. face down. And now, the next player has now two options. He can explore, go to an exploration, like I did before, or he can ask for the, council, for the help of the council. This is the council of your lies. Um, asking for help means that you will take all the cards of a single color. So when you are taking your decision here, you have to take care not to give too much opportunities to the next player. To have a large collection and, to choose yeah, from. Exactly. Okay, so here the action is simple. Nobody can contest it. It's free. You take all the cards of one color. And the third action you can do is recreating one lord. You have to read these cards that way. Here you have the cost you must pay. That means that, for example, on that card, I have to discard a lies from my, from my hand. Mm -hmm. You have three bubbles. That means that I have to discard three different colors. I can discard many cards in each color, okay? okay. But three different colors, not four, not two, three. And one of these colors must be green. Okay. The total value must be at least six. If you spend more, it's That's lost. Fine. No change. If you spend less, it's still possible to buy. Because, for example, if you have one in green, one in red, one in blue, that means only three. But if you have three pearls, you can pay for the difference. Okay. But you need at least one card in each color. Okay? First consequence, when you recreate one lord, you keep in front of you the smallest value of a lie you have paid. This means, this is uh, named affiliating one ally. It keeps in front of you, face up, and remember that at the end you will score the highest of each color. That means you federate, you affiliate the smallest one, but you will score the highest of the smallest. Okay, okay? <laughs> got it. Then there is a specific ability. Uh, when there is an arrow like that, that means that it's a one-shot effect. You apply it immediately when, when the cards come it. in play. If there is no valid target, the effect is lost. On some uh, lord, you have a key. Associated with a key, you have a long-term effect. That means that this effect will uh, be okay until the, this card is uh, dedicated to something else. Okay? <laughs> For, for example, with that character, uh, you don't have to care about colors, so which is great. But you have to buy it in one single right. color, Only which is blue, with, uh, with eight, okay? Now, I've explained the first action, the second one, the third one. And I didn't say anything about location. It's because taking control of the location is not a choice, it's a consequence. You see that you have keys printed of some of these lords, mm -hmm. and you can get keys tokens there on the Mona's track. As soon as you get your third key, you take control of one location. It's mandatory, you must do it. Imagine I have one key in front of me plus that lord, that means two keys. Two keys, yeah. If I recruit that one, I must take three keys. I must take control of one location. 
I have the choice between any of the visible uh, location at the beginning there is only one or if I don't don't want that one I can pick one two three or four and I have to choose one between the, these I take okay imagine I take only three I look at them and I keep one in front of me but I do that like this that means that means that now I keep the value of my lord, but I've More lost the abilities. Power. Okay, and that's it. And but the, the locations I, are one of the things that you can exactly. score at the end and of the game. So get, it is a good consequence. It, <laughs> yes, it's a choice between mm -hmm. control on the game due to the ability of the uh, of lord and extra points you need to win at the end of the game. So there is a question of timing during the game and to which combo you try to have to master what you want to do. The location I didn't choose comes visible for the next players. That means that the most choice I want for me, the most choice I give to the other players for free. Okay. And that's it. And you play that way until one player recruit is seventh floor. All the other have one last to have a chance to do a last thing and then you go to the score, How and many, that's it. And then you said this plays up to four players? Two to four players, it's about 15 minutes per player, that means 30 minutes for a two-player game without any change of rules. Yeah, so, oh, that's, that's nice. Yeah, well done, Bruno. <laughs> now, was it, you were explaining to me, if you wouldn't mind just briefly telling that, that since um, how the, the cover came to be, where there's not a single piece of, yes. of anything on here, it's just the image. So we had the chance to work on this game with an artist which is named Xavier Colette, and he made such a fantastic artwork. It's extraordinary. That it was difficult to, to choose which uh, face we had to choose for the <laughs> cover. Because in the game, you have five different guilds for the, for the lords. And the publisher had the idea not to choice, <laughs> not to choose, sorry, and to, to do five different covers, one for each guild. Uh, players this way can choose the, the one they prefer uh, on uh, gaming effects. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we try to put the, the title there, but um, the impact of, uh, of, uh, of the picture is less important. So to keep that impact of ugly face, <laughs> we decided to put the, the cover without any title, without the name of the designers, without yeah. the logo publisher. of the publisher. And that's okay. It's, it's, I think it's fantastic. I mean, this, <laughs> this uh, is probably one of my favorite co covers at the convention I've seen uh, so far. Well, Bruno, as always, a pleasure sitting down with you and looking at Abyss. Thank you so much.